Are you all right? I'm nothing bruised but my dignity. I'm terribly sorry. Our shopping cart just got away. I let go the handle to pick up a nickel, but it was only a bottle cap. You've just learned a lesson about life. Things are seldom what they seem. I'm still trying to figure out how Corey and I got here. You're a very persuasive man. Are you sorry you came? No, it's been an experience. But I have a dozen things to do. Cleaning to pick up and Corey's shoes to be repaired. The busy little homemaker and mother. Let me see that. O's closed, I's dotted, and T's crossed. Handwriting is a form of communication, Mr. Spencer. And I was always taught to make mine legible. It's also a mirror. And the whole pattern of your life is reflected in it. I take it you don't uh, really approve of what you see. Uh, that's a heavy question. I'm sure you have a heavy answer. I don't lay advice on people. No, but you're putting me down. You know, the free, unconventional artist and the square, middle-class matron. Okay, okay. There goes my baby life is short routine. Corey, in case you don't know it, your mother's a very bright lady. I know it. She's pretty, too. Is all this stuff yours? The Adam Spencer collection. Picked up most of it while I was sailing the seven seas. Oh, boy. We're going to take a boat to Catalina someday. Huh, Mom? Someday. Right now, we better take the car and sail for home. Mr. Spencer. Adam. Adam. It gets easier as you keep saying it. Thank you for a lovely afternoon. But we really have to go. Come on, Corey. But Adam didn't finish my face. Well, it's a good face. I can do the rest from memory, and then when it's done, I can bring it over. Bye-bye. Okay, hey, Corey! What you doing? Looking. I don't see nothing. There's nothing to see. Then why are you looking? Go away, Earl J. Wagadorn. Hi, Earl. What's the matter with him? Oh, it's a long story. I like long stories. Some other time, dear. Some other time, some other time. That's what they always tell me. <sighs> Corey, you weren't very nice to Earl. That's okay. We're friends. Oh. That's different. What are you doing out here? I don't want to miss Adam when he comes. You'd better forget about Adam. I'm sure you can find something else to do. I can't think of anything to do. But if Adam was here, he'd find a whole lot of things to do. Well, he isn't here. And it wasn't fair of him to make promises to you he never intended to keep. It's him! Corey, it's probably Marie Wagadorn or Saul Cooper. Adam brought my picture. Well, you must have been up all night. When the creative juices are flowing, time and pajamas are for shoe clerks. Here, here. Here, here. No one knows what they look like to other people. What's important is that Adam is saying something about you, Corey. Julia Baker, for a member of the square world, you're full of surprises. Speak for yourself. Frankly, I never thought we'd see you again. My mother said you wouldn't keep your promise. My mother said the same thing. <laughs> you're going to stay for dinner, aren't you, Adam? On one condition. What's that? Corey and I do the cooking. You stay out of the kitchen. Adam, I don't have a chef's hat your size. You'll just have to fluff up your halo. Okay. Deal.
kitchen before? My boy, some of the greatest cooks in the world have been men. Escoffier, Briand Savra, and Adam Spencer. Princess of the Nile. Hey, where's your pet leopard and the slaves with the peacock feather fan? Are they still making those movies? No. And I miss them. Well, look, Julia, Leonard had to go back on duty. Emergency. The city council's dedicating a new freeway. Well, I didn't think they needed police protection just to cut a little old ribbon. Oh, they always make a big thing out of the ceremonies. With Leonard gone and all that food, I thought you and Corey might like to have dinner with at least two of the Wagadorns. Oh, you know, we'd love to, Marie, but we're having dinner at home tonight. Yeah, and I can see who's cooking her. Yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Wagadorn, Mr. Spencer. Marie, this is Adam. Hi, Adam. Nice to meet you. Adam painted up my picture. He's an artist. He sure is. I wish I knew how he got you to sit still that long. I'd like to try it on Earl. Painters never give away trade secrets. Mmm. If my nostrils are dilating, I want the world to know it's food, not passion. <laughs> we can always find something extra to throw in the pot. Yes. Why don't you stay for dinner, Marie? Now, why didn't I think of that? How about it, Marie? Earl and I not only accept, we'll bring that something extra for the pot. <laughs> Yippee! you've got a great career ahead of you as a human vacuum cleaner. <laughs> well, this stuff is almost as good as hamburgers. Better. I bet you Adam's the best cook in the whole world. <clears throat> I mean, next to my mother. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Charming Billy, I have been to seek a wife. She's the joy of my life. She's a young thing and cannot leave her mother. Can she make a cherry pie, Billy boy, Billy boy? Can she make a cherry pie, Charming Billy? Mr. Cooper, I suppose you've come to complain about the noise. I'm mm. sorry. No, Mrs. Baker, I'm sorry. It sounded like you were all having such a good time in here, I come to complain because I wasn't invited. Oh, your mail was probably delayed. You were supposed to be the guest of honor. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Spencer, Mr. Cooper, our landlord. My pleasure. Excuse me. Uh, don't let me poop the party, young man. Play, sing. Enjoyment is something I personally always enjoy. Then join in. Can she make a cherry pie, Billy boy, Billy boy? Can she make a cherry pie, charming Billy? She can make a cherry pie in the twinkling of an eye. She's a young thing and cannot leave her mother. She's a young thing and cannot leave her mother. So we dropped our cargo in Manila, and the skipper set a course for Sydney, Australia. But we ran into a typhoon off the Great Barrier Reef. Waves 30 feet high. Guy, weren't you scared? Not old Adam. But when it was over, the sea was as smooth as glass. And at night, the stars were a handful of diamonds thrown across the sky. Oh, beautiful. And you had this good feeling of being at peace with yourself and with nature. Why not? It should only happen to all of us. Leonard's always wanted to build a cabin in the mountains. Just a little hideaway for weekends. <sighs> Maybe we will someday. Do it now, Mrs. Wagadorn, before you and Leonard run out of some days. 
On a policeman's salary, we could barely afford a shack. Not if you know how. I studied architecture. Anything I could sketch on? I'm afraid all we have is note paper. I can use the back of this. Good morning, Marie. I'm not talking to you. Oh? Is it anything personal or just the Monday morning blog? Your friend, Adam Spencer. I had to go and blab to Leonard about him, and he's ready to start building that cabin right away. Well, so much for my vacation at the beach. I might as well burn my bikini. Mr. Spencer certainly has an effect on people. Haven't you heard? Earl's dropping out of second grade to become a sailor. The man's contagious. He ought to be quarantined. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Lagadorn. Hi, Corey. Well, so far, I don't see any change in Corey. Hmm. Hi, Mom. Mm -hmm. Have a good day at school. Baker, you come back here. You're not wearing socks. That's okay. Adam doesn't wear them either. Morning, Melba. This thing doesn't sharpen pencils, it eats them. Good morning, Julia. What'd you do? Buy a Picasso? Not until my next raise. It's a portrait of Corey. I'm going to have it framed. Oh, let me see it. Okay. In case you think you're playing with kids, I once took a course in art appreciation. Oh, you know it's good. Who's the artist? His name's Adam Spencer. Corey and I met him Saturday under um, unusual circumstances. Honey, any time you meet a man, it's unusual. Is he handsome? Worse. He has charm, intelligence, humor. All that and talent, too. That's what's so frustrating. He refuses to do anything with it. I had an uncle like that. One part leprechaun, the rest Easter bunny. Always bringing me some little toy or a bag of penny candies. Dear old Uncle Harry. He never kept a job longer than his first payday. The Uncle Harrys and the Adam Spencers. Why do they always make the good old-fashioned virtues seem so dull? Melba's Law. No fools, no fun. Oh, Melba, you're pushing too hard. I am not. This thing's an electric termite. Adam Spencer, if my son had to choose a hero, why couldn't it have been a man with a profession or at least a job? What's that on the back? Oh, that. Marie Wagadorn said something last night about Leonard's dream of building a mountain cabin someday, and Adam drew a rough sketch. It's not that rough. He studied architecture before becoming a painter. You think there'd be a place for a man with that kind of ability and training? Hmm. Would it be nosy of me to ask where you're going? Yes. I don't want a job at Astrospace Industries or anywhere else. But Mr. Gibbs is head of the drafting department. Why won't you at least talk to him? I'm not falling into any establishment trap. Why does a good job with a good future have to be a trap? Still buying those stale routines. Early to bed, early to rise. A penny saved is a penny earned. Look, no thanks, Julia Baker. I'm traveling a different route. And as long as I'm not hurting anyone, I'm going to be true to myself and my own values. But you are hurting someone, someone you've influenced more than you realize. Who? My son. Hey! Mr. Cooper, I have a suspicion you are about to say a naughty word. True. And for what was on the tip of my mind, I apologize. Mrs. Baker, I must tell you how much I enjoyed last night and what a privilege it was to meet your friend, the artist. I'm glad you had a good time. That Adam Spencer, a free spirit. The universe is his backyard. He's seen the Taj Mahal by moonlight and Paris in the spring. A man like that is captain of a soul. But what am I? 
a slave to six units. But no longer, Mrs. Baker. Your friend has given me a whole new philosophy. Hmm, he's good at that, yeah. There's a big world out there, and it's calling to me. Live before it's too late, Sal Cooper. I know. Escape to some tropical island. Lie under a mango tree with beautiful native girls in sarongs with hibiscus blossoms in their hair. Mrs. Baker, what do you think I am, a playboy? Aha. Uh -huh. Mom, where's Australia? I want to see where Adam's been. Well, it's right... it's right there. Way down there? Mm -hmm. If the world is round, how come people don't fall off? Because of the law of gravity. You mean it's against the law to fall off? No, dear. I mean... That... Oh, I'll explain it later. Don't panic. This isn't a social call. I just want a word with Corey. Adam! 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 Hey, buddy. Where are you going? Uh, Corey, a guy like me. Well, I was born with an itchy foot. Could never stay in one place too long. Are you going away? You see, um, this friend of mine has a big ocean-going sailboat. And uh, it's entered in the yacht race to Honolulu, and he wants me to join his crew. We're shoving off tomorrow. I always did like Hawaii. That's how it is. So long, old timer. the way the trade winds blow. Well, he'll get over it. Maybe I will, too. If I'm lucky, so will I. But I guess I'll just go through life being impulsive. Me, too. Sometimes. That's an impulse I dig. Adam Spencer, you may have been a headache, but I'll say this for you. You never were a bore. <laughs> So what? You're not mad at him. I don't think it works out that way, Mom. Corey, do you remember that $10 Aunt Em sent you for your birthday? Yeah. Why don't we go out and spend it? But you said that was money for my college. Well, I've changed my mind. We are going to squander it. We'll have a double chocolate soda, and then we'll go to the hobby shop, and we'll buy that model rocket ship that you've always wanted. The whole ten dollars? Well, that's what Adam Spencer would do now, wouldn't he? Yeah, he sure would. <laughs> Oh, boy! I'm not mad at you anymore, Corey! 